Okay, so our first hymn is hymn number eight, We Gather Together. Can you guys see the title down there, or is that too low? No, you can't see it? Okay. Okay. that too low? that for the first time could you see the bottom words or no okay first time we're doing this next time I'll leave it on the upper half <laughs> okay wait go back so our next hymn is hymn 565 for the beauty of the earth 565 Him is him 111. It took a miracle. Him 111. It took a me 
Thank you for that rousing praise time. We would welcome our regular members and our guests to the Richland Center Seventh-day Adventist Church. And the announcements you can read for yourself. I would like to comment on a couple of them. Um, the non-perishable foods for a Thanksgiving basket Last week I had to be at Camp Wakanda and so was not here and was not able to remind you to bring food items and this morning when we got here for Sabbath school there wasn't much in the basket and I was a little concerned to say the least and when I went to go study uh, between Sabbath school and church I can see that uh, the box is overflowing and we need to praise the Lord for sharing his bounty with those who don't have as much as we do. Another one I wanted to mention was a thank you to the social committee for their potato social. Um, last Saturday night, I understand that you watched the gymnastics show from Southern as well as having good food. So that was, that was very nice. All right, for our call to worship, we're doing responsive reading, page 702. So if you'll take your hymnals out and turn to 702, I will read the light print and Nancy will read the dark print. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, speak of all his wonders. Glory in his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his wonders which he has done, his marvels and the judgments uttered by his mouth. O seed of Abraham, his servant, O sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He has remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Shall we pray? 
Lord, at this special time of year, we want to give thanks. Especially on this Sabbath, we want to give thanks for those that made it, um, with the roads not being the best, but keeping those who are here safe. We would ask you be with our other church members, wherever they may be. Keep them safe. We thank you for the blessings of your Sabbath. In thy name, amen. Please stand and open your hymnals to number 557. Come, ye thankful people. Be seated. It is now time for our offering. And I used the page to mark where I was going to have the call for the offering, and I don't know what I did with it, but it was talking about the Wisconsin budget and the fact that um, we need to remember at this time of year our obligations and at the meetings I was at last weekend I did find out that in our Lake Union conference there's only two of the states who have had an increase in tithe and we are one of the two our tithe is up for this year um, not all the way to December obviously but it's up 
over one and a half percent. It's not a large number, but still it's better than going the other way. So we need to remember the Lord and the blessings he has given us. Will the deacons please come forward? Lord, we do have so much to be thankful for. Please help us to remember to return to you the funds you have let us use in this time that we think of the bounties that we have been given this year. In thy name, amen. The deacons will wait upon you at this time. This time we'll all kneel together if possible. We'll have our prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to come here. Thanksgiving makes me think back to our ancestors who fought for our religious freedom, who traveled to a new country and, and endured hardships and stuff to build a new country where they could worship the way they wanted to. And Lord, we thank you for this opportunity today to be able to come here on your Sabbath and to worship you. Lord, we thank you for all the many gifts that you give us throughout the year, through the week, the blessings of loved ones and families and friends who care. Lord, again, we especially want to thank you for watching over the scene of family this morning. Lord, be with those who are not here. We thank for you for your grace. We ask your blessing upon Carl and a safe trip home. In Jesus' dear name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is found in Psalms 107, 8 and 9.
O that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Our text that Nancy just read is very important for this time of year that we need to give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. Since Thanksgiving is next week, we think back on other times, on other memories that have changed our lives, and we can thank the Lord for those things. And it's good to remember as Nancy mentioned in her prayer, what happened all those years ago in Plymouth when the pilgrims came and what really happened that first year in the new world and why were those experiences so forceful. The pilgrims landed in Plymouth in late December of 1620, there were approximately 100 people. That first winter, 48 of them died, almost half of scurvy, viruses, and exposure. And what at this point was there to be thankful for? People died in icy, cold huts aboard a cold, and filthy ship. By the time of the first Thanksgiving, the survivors knew too well that good health was one of God's most precious blessings. During that first winter, the able-bodied ones had to build shelters for the rest. Every morning, they had to row ashore from the ship and since they couldn't go all the way up to the beach, they actually had to wade the last few yards in the frigid water. And the clothes they had back then and shoes aren't like ours today. Back then, they had wool, canvas, and leather clothing. Um, so they had to work in wet clothes all day long. They chopped trees, they sawed planks, they erected stone footings and hearths, and they built entire houses that are no bigger than our living rooms. What was there to be thankful for? They were thankful for the shelter that the building provided and their clothing. The pilgrims were used to town dwelling and able to purchase their food in markets now suddenly they had to find food for themselves or, worse yet, grow it themselves. Their wheat, their barley, their pea crops failed. Corn was plentiful. And with the guidance of a Native American friend named Squanto, they learned how to fertilize their corn with fish and to use the corn in many ways. They also learned to hunt and fish. This would help them contribute to the very first Thanksgiving feast. And so they were thankful for their food and the assistance of Native Americans in helping them live off the land. To bring Thanksgiving to our country as a national holiday didn't take place until 1863 the first national proclamation was issued in October of 1789, a short time after New York had ratified the Constitution and there was a proclamation by President George Washington which read, and I quote, whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of the Almighty to obey his will, to be grateful for his benefits, 
and humbly to implore his protection and favor. And whereas both houses of Congress have by their joint committee requested me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer. Notice it mentions prayer in here. To be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many and signal favors of the Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity to peaceably establish a form of government for safety and happiness. Now, therefore, I do recommend and assign Thursday, the 26th day of November next, to be devoted by the people of these states to the service of that great and glorious being who is the beneficent author of all good that was, that is, or that will be, that we may then all unite in rendering unto him our sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection of this country. It was, however, a woman by the name of Sarah Joseph Hale who first suggested Thanksgiving should be a national holiday. She was the editor of a magazine called Goody's Ladies Book, and for almost 26 years, she wrote letters, she wrote editorials to the president, to governors, to anyone that she thought might be able to change and make this a holiday. Finally, she was able to get the support of Abraham Lincoln. It was the third year of the Civil War, and after he believed the Union had been saved, he therefore proclaimed a National Day of Thanksgiving to be celebrated on Thursday, November 26th, naming the fourth Thursday of November as the day to be observed each year. And so, as another Thanksgiving is coming in 2014, we need to ask ourselves, if the pilgrims could be so thankful for so little, how thankful should we be for so much? As we think back over the past 11 months and 22 days, many things have happened to our church family. There have been good times, there have been baptisms, there have been sad times when members or family have suffered illness or death. Through all this, we know that the Lord is there for us. He rejoices in our joys and sorrows for our pain. I read a story about a young couple that had gone into the egg producing business. They had a large hen house. There were approximately 1,500 laying hens. And if any of you have had chickens, you know at night, they sing, they cluck, and they love to hear that sound from 1,500 happy hens every night. It was approaching Thanksgiving and his wife was planning what she was going to prepare for the traditional feast. And some of you might be making your plans already, and some of the things might be the same. Turkey, dressing, rolls, cranberry sauce, green bean casserole, mashed potatoes, gravy, and to top off the meal, she would have pie, pumpkin pie, apple pie, pecan pie, and vanilla ice cream. It was going to be a lot of work, but it was a tradition she really enjoyed. A few days before the meal preparation began, one evening as they were going to bed, they heard something that gave them a little twinge of worry. Instead of the chickens singing their goodnight song, there were a few coughs. 
It didn't worry them. They thought, it's nothing to be alarmed about. But the next morning, when they went out to check on their chickens, there were a few dead hens. It got worse. By noon, more hens were down, and the coughing was worse. They couldn't ignore the problem. Something was drastically wrong in the chicken house. So they called the health inspectors. Before the health inspectors got there, they noticed the conveyor lines were getting gummed up. Because of the sick hens, the chickens were laying eggs that either had very thin shells or worse, no shells, just a raw egg. All the egg goo from 1,500 hens was making a nightmarish mess. When the inspectors arrived, they put on white suits with hoods and visors, complete with covers over their boots. After what seemed like forever, the inspectors came out of the chicken house with the horrific news that their flock had avian flu and the rest of the remaining hens had to be euthanized. Then the entire chicken house had to be sterilized. Everything from nesting boxes, cages, water and food dishes, the walls, the floors, scraped clean of chicken manure and shoveled out the conveyors taken apart piece by piece and reassembled before they could put another flock in the chicken house. Suddenly, Thanksgiving that was going to be calm and relaxing with family and friends wasn't going to happen. And all the things to be thankful for were gone in a few days. The young couple started to try and clean and sanitize everything by themselves because this was their livelihood. And without chickens, there was no money. And they still owed the bank on the chickens that had been euthanized. They worked day and night until they were so tired they could hardly move. The worst part was the egg yolk encrusted conveyor system. It had to be taken apart, painstakingly scrubbed and sanitized before the inspectors would give their okay to start with a new flock of hens. They had been working so hard. It didn't sink in as they wearily rolled out of bed that morning. It was Thanksgiving Day. What did they have to be thankful for, thought the wife as she thought about the wonderful meal that could have been. Just another day, working like dogs to try and pass inspection so they could try to get out of debt. As she and her husband sat down for a quick bite of breakfast, before resuming their thankless task they needed to complete, she thought she heard something. Going to the kitchen window and parting the curtains, she saw cars, lots of cars, pulling into their farmyard. Who were these people piling out of the cars? And what were they doing here on Thanksgiving Day. She and her husband hurried out of the house to find out. As they got closer, they saw their pastor and many of the church family, plus others they didn't even know. The pastor gave a cheery good morning and then told them word had spread 
throughout the entire community about what had happened to them and their entire flock of chickens. So, he continued, we decided you could use some help. As he was talking, the people began to get out their cleaning supplies. And the women of the church began to set up tables that were soon loaded with food. With this army of workers pitching in, by the end of Thanksgiving Day, the chicken house was spotlessly cleaned and sanitized. They then contacted the inspectors who came out the next day and evaluated the hen house. They pronounced it disease-free and ready for a new flock of hens. A few weeks later, a new flock of chickens arrived and were put in the newly cleaned chicken house. That night, as the husband and wife drifted off to sleep, they listened to the contented singing of 1,500 contented chickens. His wife said, I didn't realize how thankful we are for such a loving and caring church family. We have a lot to be thankful for. Last year, I asked you as church members to make a list of things that you were thankful for last year. Some of you turned them in to me, and I began listing them. I ended up with over 40, and it'll be interesting to see if some of you still are thankful for some of the things you were a year ago. Number one, health. Number two, mentors. Number three, today's mild temperature and no ice. I added that one. Four, the pastor and his family. Five, a supportive church family. Six, religious freedom. Seven, peace in the United States. Eight, Christ gave his life for my salvation. Nine, a loving God. Ten, God's word. Eleven, parents. Twelve, children. Thirteen, friends. Fourteen, pets. Fifteen, work. Sixteen, family. Seventeen, music. Eighteen, I like this one, being alive. Nineteen, educational opportunities. Twenty, beauties in nature, including flowers and birds. Twenty-one, traveling to see family. Twenty-two, a pleasant home. Twenty-three, good income. Twenty-four, enough food. Twenty-five, clean, fresh water. And I added, thanks to Bob and Cliff. We now have clean, fresh water here at church. Twenty-five and a half, I stuck that one in, faithful church leaders. Twenty-six, the air we breathe. Twenty-seven, good neighbors. Twenty-eight, God hears and answers prayers. Twenty-nine, a church building safe, and warm and dry. 30, many Bible translations. 31, the privilege of prayer. 32, God's protection and guidance. 33, love and support from church family. 34, spiritual gifts. 35, a loving spouse. 36, contacts at the county fair. 
37, eyesight. 38, family that steps in when needed. 39, exercise. 40, Anthony's baptism. 41, Ruthie's baptism. And my favorite, knowing Jesus is coming again and soon. Sometimes we think of things to be thankful for only to think of the positive ones. Did you have some negative ones that you might have thought of as I read the list? I remember a few years ago that we'd been asked to take a fellow staff member to the airport a few days later and we actually lived in Fall River which was a couple miles from Wisconsin Academy so I decided to go to the post office and get our mail during my free period. As I was driving I felt the car pull to the side. I stopped and got out to see a flat tire. I didn't want to spend my free period changing a dirty greasy tire but I got it done and made it back for class. Later the light dawned on me. If we'd been going to Madison to the airport, a flat tire could have caused the staff member to miss his flight. And at that moment, I said, thank you, Lord, for the flat tire. Sandra felt as low as the heels of her shoes as she pushed against the November wind and the florist shop door. Her life had been easy like a spring breeze. Then in the fourth month of her second pregnancy, a minor automobile accident stole her ease. During this Thanksgiving week, she would have delivered a son. She grieved over her loss. As if it wasn't enough, her husband's company threatened a transfer. Then her sister, whose holiday visit she loved, called to say she couldn't make it. What's worse, Sandra's friend made her mad by suggesting her grief was a God-given path to maturity that would allow her to empathize with others who suffer. She has no idea what I'm feeling, thought Sandra with a shudder. Thanksgiving. Thankful for what? She wondered, for a careless driver whose truck had hardly been scratched when he rear-ended her? For the airbag that saved her life but took the life of her unborn child? Good afternoon, may I help you? The shop's clerk approached, startled her. I, I need an arrangement, stammered Sandra. For Thanksgiving? Do you want beautiful but ordinary? Or would you like to challenge the day with a customer favorite I call the Thanksgiving Special? Asked the shop clerk. I'm convinced that flowers tell stories. Are you looking for something that conveys gratitude this Thanksgiving? Not exactly, Sandra blurted out. In the last five months, everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. Sandra regretted her outburst and was surprised when the shop clerk said, I have the perfect arrangement for you. That's when the shop's bell rang and another customer entered. The store clerk said, hi, Barbara, let me get you your order. She politely excused herself and walked to the workroom and then quickly reappeared carrying an arrangement of bows and long-stemmed thorny roses, except the ends of the rose stems were neatly snipped. There were no flowers. Want these in a box? asked the clerk. Sandra watched for the customer's response. Was this a joke? Who would want thorny rose stems with no flowers? She waited for laughter, 
but neither woman laughed. Yes, please, Barbara said with an appreciative smile. You'd think after three years of getting the special, I wouldn't be so moved by its significance. But I can feel it right here, all over again, she said as she gently tapped her chest. She paid and left the shop. Uh, stammered Sandra, that lady just left with, uh, she left with no flowers. Right, said the clerk. I cut off the flowers. That's the special. I call it the Thanksgiving Thorns Bouquet. Oh, come on. You can't tell me someone is willing to pay for that, exclaimed Sandra. Barbara came into the shop three years ago, feeling much like you feel today, explained the clerk. She thought she had very little to be thankful for. She had lost her father to cancer. The family business was failing. Her son was into drugs. And she was facing major surgery. That same year, I lost my husband, continued the clerk, and for the first time in my life, had just spent the holidays alone. I had no children, no husband, no family nearby, and too great a debt to allow any travel. So what did you do? Asked Sandra. I learned to be thankful for thorns, answered the clerk quietly. I've always thanked God for good things in life and never to ask him why those good things happened to me. But when bad stuff hit, did I ever ask? It took time for me to learn that dark times are important. I've always enjoyed the flowers of life, but it took thorns to show me the beauty of God's comfort. You know, the Bible says that God comforts us when we're afflicted. And from his consolation, we learn to comfort others. Sandra sucked in her breath as she thought about the very thing her friend had tried to tell her. I guess the truth is, I don't want comfort. I've lost a baby. And I'm angry with God. Just then, someone else walked into the shop. Hey, Phil, shouted the clerk to a short, balding man. My wife sent me in to get our usual Thanksgiving arrangement. Twelve thorny, long-stemmed stems, laughed Phil, as the clerk handed him a tissue-wrapped arrangement from the refrigerator. Those are for your wife? Sandra asked incredulously. Do you mind me asking why she wants something that looks like that? No, glad you asked, Phil replied. Four years ago, my wife and I nearly divorced. After 40 years, we were in a real mess. But with the Lord's grace and guidance, we slogged through problem after problem. He rescued our marriage. Jenny here, the clerk, told me she kept a vase of rose stems to remind her of what she learned from thorny times. And that was good enough for me. I took home some of those stems. My wife and I decided to label each one for a specific problem and give thanks for what that problem taught us. As Phil paid the clerk, he said to Sandra, I highly recommend the special. I don't know if I can be thankful for thorns in my life, Sandra said to the clerk. It's all too fresh. Well, the clerk replied carefully, my experience has shown me that thorns make roses more precious.
precious. We treasure God's providential care more during trouble than at any other time. Remember, it was a crown of thorns that Jesus wore so we might know his love. Don't resent the thorns. Tears rolled down Sandra's cheeks. For the first time since the accident, she loosened her grip on resentment. I'll take those 12 thorny, long-stemmed stems, please, she managed to choke out. I hoped you would, said the clerk gently. I'll have them ready in a minute. Thank you. What do I owe you, Sarah asked. Nothing, nothing but a promise to allow God to heal your heart. The first year's arrangements always on me. The clerk smiled and handed a card to Sandra. I'll attach this card to your arrangement Maybe you'd like to read it first. And this is what it said. My God, I have never thanked you for my thorns. I have thanked you a thousand times for my roses, but never once for my thorns. Teach me the glory of the life I bear. Teach me the value of my thorns. Show me that I have climbed closer to you along the path of pain. Show me that through my tears, the colors of your rainbow look much more brilliant. Praise him for your thorn, for your roses. Thank him for your thorns. In closing, we would like to sing number 559. Now thank we all our God. Shall we stand?
Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the roses, but please help us to be thankful for the thorns. In thy name, amen. Thank you.